excuse me, I don't know what you are doing. Hello and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I have a sewing project that has been months in the making and I'm very excited to show you. I'm going to be making another gunny sacks. This one is a true authentic gunny sacks pattern. The last one I made was just kind of gunny sacks look-alike pattern. Sorry, I'm like waving at the air. There's a lot of dust in my apartment. The one that I'm doing, I bought a reproduction or I guess like tracing thing. I will link the pattern that I bought, bought down below. It is printed in white printer paper. I need to cut it out, which is if any of you have been around here, I hate doing this part. It is Simplicity 8908. It is a gunny sacks that that is like thick straps. It has like some bows on the side, has a ruffle. It has a lot going for it and I'm excited to make it. I am gonna alter this pattern a little. It has buttons down the front and I am gonna swap those buttons for the corset top thing that they do. And then it has bows that tie on the side, but I just want one bow in the back. So I am going to alter this guy a little bit. However, it should be really, really doable. And the reason I'm so excited about this project and it's taken me so long to make is I am designing my own fabric for this. So some of you may remember I recently sold my unicorn gunny sacks dress. This is a gunny sacks that the pattern had unicorns in it and it just like it didn't fit me right. I didn't wear it and so I decided it was finally time to give it up. But before I did that, I took a photo of the pattern so I could reproduce it digitally myself and alter it enough that it's my own pattern. So that is what I did. So we're gonna jump into the design process of this fabric real quick. All right, so for the design of this pattern, I first started by I drew all of these using various geometric shapes. I drew some roses, some flowers, some unicorns. The unicorns, I did go pretty close to what the original pattern they used on the gunny sacks was because I loved the shape of those unicorns. They're kind of more like fairy tale story or fairy tale book unicorns that have that really long horn. So they have like that hint of danger and I liked the bucking. So that is what I went with. And then here you can see I am taking all of those flowers that I drew and the unicorns that I drew and just kind of starting to work out where I need things to like break up each other with. So just moving and dragging these flowers around until I was happy with a pattern I got. These flowers are definitely a little bit different than the original pattern, mainly because I need them copyright wise to be different, but also because I kind of modeled them off of wisteria and roses and daisies, which are all flowers I really enjoy and that are pretty geometric, but also organic. So I thought they would make nice shapes for this. I'm just playing and getting these done. And then once I am satisfied, I am saving them. And then I am tiling these two together so that way there is less repetition in the pattern. When I first exported this and tried to do a tile pattern, I just felt like it was a bit too repetitive. So this double tile where they're a little bit opposite really helps that out. And then after that, I went ahead and I imported this into Spoonflower. Spoonflower is who I decided to use because they offer the cheapest custom printing. So that's who I went with. And you can find these patterns in my Spoonflower shop if you would like to have this fabric too and maybe make your own dream gunny sack. That was the process of this. I then ordered my first test sample and we will now hop back to my intro. All right, you have seen the design process. My first print turned out rather disastrous because I actually left a one pixel white border around it. I definitely scaled it too small. I haven't done print for a while, but after that I finally got a successful print. So let's talk about today's fabric. So I decided to use spoon flower. I am using their cotton lawn because it's a little bit lighter. Uh, I didn't want to go heavy quilting cotton on this one. So I have seven yards of this. It was rather spendy. However, it is definitely worth it and I am very excited because I'm gonna finally get my dream gunny sacks dress. I lightened the blue compared to the original because the original is quite dusty and I wanted something kind of brighter and more, I guess, princessy. And then I think the pinks I use are also just a little bit less faded and more vibrant. So I'm really excited to use this. So I am going to have to cut this pattern, which I'm not super looking forward to, but so we're gonna hop into that. 
right now. All right, ignore me as I am sitting here in my like cozy sweats because it is still so cold here even though I started this project in June and I am just cutting out all of this paper using my paper scissors. I like to just sit down and do this and get it out of the way because I absolutely hate cutting out shapes with paper. This pattern, it's traced by hand, which is interesting. I feel like most reproductions I buy are traced like digitally and so the lines are really straight, but this one were like much more thick, like traced with a sharpie which does mean stuff is uneven but this all came out together fine so I will definitely purchase from this vendor again because she has a great array of reproduction gunny sacks patterns and then after I had cut out these paper pieces I now was going to work on the modification this was tricky and it took a lot of like brain calculating I don't know how else to explain it First, I'm just starting by tracing this pattern directly. And so what I am trying to do here is I wanna change the button front to instead be a corset front. So to do that, I start by tracing all of my markings. Here you can see I'm actually drawing that line down and then cutting it in. And then I figure that's my new cut line, which then gives me a new sewing line. And then I just repeated this process on the facing. But yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing, but it all worked out in the end, so it's okay. And then here I am cutting this out. I bought way too much fabric. I just have yards and yards and yards of this. So I'm thinking I'll probably end up selling the rest of this on my Mercari. So you can check that link down below to pick it up. It will be much cheaper than it was on Spoonflower. It's cute. It's just I, after working on this dress, I don't need another pattern in it. But otherwise the cutting for this was straightforward. I didn't need to cut for any French seams or anything like that. And I wasn't using contrasting fabric, so I cut it all out of this fabric. I think that's how I miscalculated the yardage I needed so poorly is because I forgot that I didn't need like all the contrasty bits, uh, just some. And so I think that must be where I screwed up. And then because I'm lazy, I just wanted to show you a lazy trick that I do that is questionable, but you can take it or leave it. But I need six of these, so I am folding over this fabric six times and then pinning and cutting it out. So that way I only have to cut it out once because like I said, I'm incredibly lazy. This is probably not what's recommended for the longevity of your scissors, but I'm looking for the longevity of me not hating cutting out fabric. So that's why I did it. Good morning. So I am about to start a big day of sewing. It is about 10 a.m. and I plan on sewing till probably about 6 unless I magically finish this earlier but I don't think I will. It's been two weeks since I last cut this fabric. I've been reading the pattern. I actually think the way this is put together is super interesting and I think I'll learn a lot that will allow me to learn how to piece out other patterns in the future which I'm really excited about and I think I'm gonna learn a lot about trim. The way this dress is constructed you construct the back and then the front and then and then you sew it together. That'll be good because I can kind of figure out what I'm doing with the back before then moving to the front. So that is the plan. We're gonna start with the back. We're gonna learn all the things and I'm really excited about this project. I've been looking at these cutout pieces for weeks and I am ready to finally put them all together into hopefully what'll be a really amazing dress. We're starting off our day with Spooky refusing to get off of my ironing board, which is really not ideal, although she is so cute. I did eventually pick her up and boot her off. And then here I have put what would have been a contrasting fabric, but in this case they're the same fabric, but I'm still sewing this down so I get the lines. So I'm just basting this piece on top of the other piece. This is a back middle piece where there will be some ribbon detailing. And the reason I ended up still doing this, even though it's not required with the way I'm sewing, is because it will give me that guideline for when I go to apply trim. Next up in this is to just sew the side seams or the side back seams. These are all still back pieces. And then I just sewed these together. Together. Once I had sewed these together, I'm just pinking the edges. That is how I'm going to finish the edges in this dress because this is a really dense fabric, so I'm not too worried about it fraying. Here I am pinning the skirt to that like each back half, which is just really weird. I haven't really done this in this order before, but it totally makes sense when you see me put on the trim. So here you can see me pressing it down. Pressing is really extra important in this fabric because of the way you're going to sew on the trim. So I had made no decision or plans around trim for this project at this point in time, which questionable decision maybe, but whatever. And so here I am just playing with a bunch of different trims I selected as well as some ribbon colors I bought. I bought a cream and a pink ribbon because I wasn't sure what I was going to use. And then I have a bunch of different laces that I'm just trying different combos before I go ahead and settle on one. And then once I had this combo picked out, I am now playing with it 
to figure out how to pin it down, I think first I should be sewing down the lace and then I should be sewing down the ribbon on top of it. This pattern does not call for lace. The lace is my own decision. So it does not give me any instructions on how to put it in because it's only expecting me to put in ribbon. But I just thought the lace was a nice, really feminine touch. So once I have that all figured out, I am first starting by basting down the lace. The lace will then be sewn over again when I put the ribbon on it because the seam of the ribbon should overlap with the seam on the lace. Here I decided to sew this in blue thread. Uh, in the future I'll sew it in pink because I think it blends better with the ribbon, but I was learning this first round. And then I sewed on the ribbon, the side that overlaps with the lace. And then after I had sewed that one on, I then went and sewed the inner level of the ribbon that is not overlapping. I learned to be a much more slow and deliberate sewer when doing this because when I would falter, the, you could really see it in the ribbon. So I definitely, this was a good lesson in patience. This project required a whole lot of thread changes. I got very used to re-threading my machine every five minutes it felt like because I wanted the blue for when I sewed the fabric but the pink for when I sewed the trim. So lots of re-threading here. And then here I am just sewing the seam down the back. They have you assemble the back and the front separately before assembling them together. So I am getting the back and then basting where the zipper is going to go in. I did notice this lawn really did a number on my machine. I think it's because it was so dense and I maybe didn't have the right needle selected but I tried a few and I felt like none of them work particularly well but you could hear my machine struggle to get through this and you can really tell in the basting because my basting stitches even though I have them set out of five length which is its longest length they look like they're like three so that's not great and then here I am prepping getting in the back zipper I found a zipper that matches pretty well so I'm just first pinning it in and then I will be basting it in by hand here I am sewing it by machine I did this one a little bit different in that usually I have already cut the zipper open so I can get it super even at this point in time. However, I had not done it in this case. I was trying to do the like kind of eyeball-y method where then you rip it open after, but I definitely had a much more crooked zipper doing it this way. However, I'm not going to lie. It was very satisfying to rip the seam open and just see a really beautiful zipper below it, but I still think this is not the best method for me. I think I'm a little bit too neat and perfectionist for this one to work well for me. Here I am doing all that prep work for the front that I did for the back so sewing seams together getting everything ready to assemble the trim on it and here I am going ahead and prepping the ties that are going to tie around the back. I skipped this step for the back because I didn't want to tie the bows on the hips because I just don't love how it looks for me and I just wanted one tie that wraps all the way to the back so that is what I am sewing here. And then I am just turning this out. I really need to get in the habit of sewing some threads into the top that I can then pull out the bottom. It's a way easier trick than using my turn tools and my favorite turn tool has broken under all of the pressure I put it under. So that's a bummer. And then here I am ironing all of that out, which is the most satisfying part. These are looking gorgeous. I got the unicorns sitting the way I want where they're all right side up. And then here I am pinning in where the tie goes. It goes right in the princess seam, which is the seam that goes over the bust. And you just pin it in. You're supposed to, I think, technically base it down first, but I was lazy and didn't. And then I just went ahead and sewed those seams. And then here I am making sure to press those seams in a very precise and correct direction because it will then be top stitched down by the trim I eventually put on top. So this is a really key part that you can kind of go loosey-goosey on other projects, but on this one it's really important to follow the directions. And then here I am doing the assembly of the skirt, which is sewing down the middle, pressing that, and then putting in gathering stitches right in the front. I have feelings about these gatherings that we will get into after the reveal, but... And then here I am fitting those gathers into the waist of the bodice. This is just taking some work and some finessing, um, but it's pretty straightforward really. And this is a really, really, really light set of gathers. I've gotten that whole thing together, so now I am getting the lace sewn down in that bib-like pattern, and so here I am doing that, and I have, I think, four corners to go around as well as some curves, so yeah, this just took a lot of work, and I am a much more precise sewer after this project, and the trim looks great. And here again, I'm doing the lace, and then I'm doing the ribbon up on top of it. And now that I have gotten all of that done, we are putting in pockets. I have sewn the pockets as instructed. I don't know if you saw in the cutting, but there was kind 
kind of like this rectangle shape that was a little bit sticking out. It then has you sew the pockets to that, you press that, and then you sew everything together. It's a really interesting way to do pockets that I'm not quite sure if it's my favorite way to do pockets, but it was a new way and it's always good to learn a new way to do things. And then here I just, after I pin all of these together, I'm just sewing up those side seams. Here I am just prepping those side seams for finishing by pinking all the edges and I especially did this on the pockets. The pockets can be where it frays because it's just like cut weird. However, this fabric is not going to fray. It is so, so, so tightly woven. And with that done, we go ahead and I am turning my focus onto the facing. So here I'm just sewing those seams and then after I sewed the sides of these together, I then also did the clean finishing of the edge by just folding it over. These I now do while folding it on my machine because they don't really need to be precise and I find they turn out better if I'm just kind of using my machine to put the tension on them as opposed to ironing them first. And now for the trim. This type of trim is the type of trim that makes me really anxious because you're relying on it sitting in a seam to then kind of pop up and out of the dress. And this is, to me, has always been really hard to do. So what I do first is I just baste along where I want the trim to go. I'm not basting the trim on, I'm just basting along. And then after that, I'm basting the trim on that line that I just stitched that I know is consistently 5 eighths away. And I'm basting it on that with the amount that I want sticking out, sticking out or like down on this. Um, so that's how I have, I guess, learned how to make this type of trim less anxiety or challenging producing for me. So that is what I'm doing here. And then after I get this trim basted down, I am going to then put on the facing and then I'm going to sew with a side with the basting stitches up. That tells me exactly where my trim is located. And so I know when I'm actually sewing those seams, the trim will pop up sandwiched between the facing and the outside fabric. I also have some straps here that I made off camera and I am making sure the ribbon and the lace perfectly align as I stick it into the facing. So that way it creates a like nice optical illusion, which you'll see later what I'm talking about. It kind of makes no sense here. And here's some fun little footage of Spooky jumping on my sewing machine as I sew and startling me. Although I did have to give her a kiss because I love her so much. And here you can see her looking on as I try to finish my sewing for the night. I just have a few more steps to go. I got really focused in on this and ended up sewing for 11 hours today, which was a lot. I have finished sewing the seams for the facing and now you can see I am just clipping everything to make sure it will lie nice and smooth when I turn it inside out. What's great about this method of putting the lace in like this is you can kind of just yank the lace to kind of get all of those corners out and ready to be pressed really really nicely and neatly and then you don't need to understitch. I'm pretty pleased because this is my first time doing this intensive of trims and I think it's turning out really really well. Good morning. It is approximately 10:15. I made so much progress yesterday on my dress. I actually can't believe it. I got super hyper focused and worked for about 11 hours straight. Well, I worked for 12 hours straight, but I took two half hour meal breaks trying to take care of myself and all that. Uh, and I basically have a complete dress. Today, I just need to put the ruffle on. Um, I need to make the ruffle and then put it on which is actually really easy. Uh, I will show you guys, the first thing I'll cut to is I'll show you guys, I'll give you a run through through the hand sewing. Hand sewing this material sucks. I think at this point I wouldn't recommend their lawn. I mean, it's the best option of their options if you're gonna make a dress like this, but it's been a huge pain to sew with. I can tell it's hard on my machine. If you are doing a mostly machine stitch pattern, I would still recommend it. But if you're gonna do anything hand sewn, I don't think I would recommend their lawn at all. <laughs> oh, hey Spooky, do you like your mug? But yeah, I can't believe the progress I made. However, I did not take the best care of my body, so I woke up to pretty severe muscle spasms. As some of you know on this channel, I struggle a lot with muscle spasms, particularly in my back. And I woke up to some spasming in my shoulder and actually in my calves of like my sewing machine presser foot. So that was not ideal, uh, hence a slower start this morning. But since I just have the ruffle, I'm gonna go ahead and push through it since it's probably, I have probably about two hours of sewing left. So I'm just gonna get that done and then call it good, I think. With that, let's go ahead and dive into the sewing. All right, let's start walking you through the hand sewing I did last night. So I tacked this down by the zipper so it's not waving around and all wild. And then on every seam or place where like on the other side there's ribbon, I stitched through. I just like stitched the facing down. I usually, I do stitch all the way around the facing, but I felt unable to do that because, let's see if you can see it. 
I don't know if you can see these, but these are actually puncture holes from the needle. So it really scars this fabric and I tried 10 different types of needles to see what would work and none of them, like the smallest hole is right here. So yeah, just not ideal. I also really screwed up my nail. I hand sewing uh, last night. I laced it with the lacing I had gone and gotten at Joann's. I ended up using the same trim for the lacing as what I used for the rest of the garment, even though that was not my ideal, but I couldn't find my stash of correct stuff. Oh, and then I hand sewed on the straps here. I just went around the edges. It's not necessarily the cleanest up here, but it just sort of is what it is because I can't basically sew anywhere that's visible because of the holes and punctures it leaves. So yeah, that's the scoop. And now let's go ahead and get on with the ruffle. Here I am just sewing all of the different pieces of the ruffle together. Just sewing those seams, going at it, pretty excited because I'm getting really close to the finished product. And then once I have done that, I am just double turn hemming the edges of one side of the ruffle. This is going to be the part of the ruffle that, that hangs to the bottom. You can do these lace. I just felt like it was a lot of that really delicate fine lace and that wasn't quite the look I was going for here. So I chose to leave it at just a plain hem. And then here I am working on getting the ruffle gathered into where it belongs. I have run gathering stitches through two panels at a time. So there's three different places to pull threads from because I learned my lesson last time I did this where I put the thread through like at least three or four yards and then the, the thread broke and I was just completely screwed and it was just big pain in the butt because you had to move all of the ruffles through everything, all the gathering. So I've learned my lesson and I don't do that anymore. And so in this case, I just have it in two panels by two panels. So that way it's just easy to pull it to gather it and I don't have to get the gathers to go through the whole giant ruffle. So you can always learn new things that make your general sewing practice better because the instructions didn't tell me to do this, but because I've made this mistake before, I knew that this is the way I wanted to do it. And then here you can catch me being foolish. I had friends on the way to pick me up for something and I thought I can finish this really, really fast. That is never the attitude to go into sewing with and I deeply regretted it because of how quick I was running my machine, the thread kept breaking, the tension kept being off, stitches were getting skipped. Because of the thickness of this fabric, I needed to be really slow and deliberate. Back from that, I then had to unthread and rethread my entire machine as well as clean it out and replace the needle because of my poor decisions I made at this moment in time. So yes, don't, don't rush your sewing. Don't think you can do one more seam as your friends are waiting for the bridge near your place to go down so they can drive over it. But I have finally gotten the ruffle on and here you can see I am stitching the lace, getting it all ready for the final, final reveal. I am so pumped about this because it is shaping up really beautifully. And so yeah, first I'm doing the lace and then I'm going over it and doing the ribbon, just like I've done a bunch of other times. This maybe isn't as even as I wanted because I wanted to finish this so I could wear it to work the next day. So with that, let's go ahead and hop into the reveal. Alrighty, you have seen the reveal. I am so happy with this dress. I think, again, I feel like I repeat myself all the time, but this might be one of my favorite makes ever because it's been so many months in the planning and I guess the making, but here it is. It is so cute, but before we hop into any more of the wrap up, let's talk about how much it cost. All right, let's break down the cost of this one. So as always, we'll start with fabric, which 
is usually the most expensive part and that is true in this case for sure. My fabric cost me $187.85. It would have cost significantly less had I not needed to swatch test things and had not had a bad swatch come back. So it did cost a little bit more than I might have preferred given the quality, but like I said, I love this pattern, so it was worthwhile. And then for the pattern, the pattern was $44.10. I think this was worth every penny. I absolutely adored it. I will use it again and it will get cheaper the longer I use it. And as for the supplies, the trim I used was pretty cheap because I bought it in bulk secondhand. So it didn't cost that much money included, and this also includes the threads and needles and everything else I use. And then last and always most expensive is the cost of labor. This took me 15 hours to make, so that was a labor cost of $375 at the rate of $25 an hour, which seems to be the going rate of a seamstress in Seattle. Though if you look at the totals here, without labor, it totaled at $252.95. Not bad considering like the final results. Definitely worth it to me and the supplies I spent. And then once you add in my labor, you get to a grand total of $627.95. I actually think considering all the detailed work in a dress like this, that is a totally reasonable price. I know we, we think of fashion differently because of the mass production of it, but considering all the trim and the details and everything. I think this is more than a fair price for this dress. And this is your little reminder that I have a Ko-Fi if you want to go and buy me a coffee. It really helps me out on this channel. As you can see, supplies add up very quick. And I love showing these projects to you all. But with that, let's go ahead and hop back into the outro. So you have seen the cost breakdown. While this was decently expensive, it was worth every penny. I am so happy with this dress. I would, ooh, would I pay double what it's worth? I think I might. I absolutely love it. Realistically, it is a cheaper alternative to buying a unicorn gunny sack since those are going usually for over a thousand now. But here it is. It is so beautiful. I've already worn it to work one day. I got lots of compliments on it. I layered a long sleeve blouse under it so it was like work appropriate. And it was really, really cute, which also shows the versatility of this. And it was very comfy. I ate a giant meal at work the day I wore this and I was still very comfortable in it. So that's always a win. I'm trying to think what else about this dress. I don't know. I just love it so much. Um, it makes me feel girly. I guess it's that it just makes me feel like myself and I absolutely love that about it. And yeah, I think it was really worth it. And it was also really fun to design my own fabric, which speaking of, I actually designed it in, whoa, um, I actually designed it in a bunch of different colors. These will all be available for you on Spoonflower if you want to print it. I will say, I don't know that I would recommend their lawn unless you're making something like this dress. I think if I make something with them, which I plan on making a dress with this fabric again in the future, I think I might go with their cotton sateen instead. If I was gonna make another gunny sacks, I would use their lawn, even though I think it was really hard on my machine and it was obviously really hard on my hands to hand stitch. If you are doing a hand stitching project, absolutely do not buy the lawn. <laughs> These are the different colors. Of course, we have the blue and then I have the black and white version that I made for those who don't like color. And then I also have this really nice pink and blue. It's just a flip of the colors. And then for those neutral lovers or kind of more, I would say like cottage core or hobbit core people, I have this brown. And then this green is actually my favorite of all of them. My next dress that I make out of this fabric will be out of the green. I have been thinking about what I might want to make. Maybe it'll be a winter dress or something like that out of this. I just think this is really, really cute. And I love like just kind of like the lack of contrast in it. Like I like how the leaves and stuff blend into it and it feels like there's maybe a little less going on. But all these colors are available in my Spoonflower shop. I'll link them down below. I believe 10% of that kicks back to me if you do buy from there, which isn't that much. But I wanted to make this fabric available for anybody who might want to make their own little like grown up unicorn outfit. <laughs> I will say I am not gonna start all of a sudden designing fabrics. While it was fun to get back in touch with my visual design roots. This was only worth it for me because it was a very specific fabric I wanted. And this dress more than replaces that unicorn gunny sacks I gave away. I love this dress so much more than that one. One of the other things that I love about this dress and makes me feel really good about making it is the fact that I can now. I feel like I'm finally reaching the sewing ability to make some of my dream pieces, which you'll see more of those up in the coming months. I'm really excited about them, but yeah, I just, I feel like my skill has really grown and like flourished and it's just really interesting and it makes me really happy <laughs> um, because 
some of these things were things I could have only dreamed of making before. That basically like wraps this up. Stay tuned for more sewing projects. And then of course, as usual, you can do the like and leaving a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this dress or which favorite color of fabric I made is. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and do that. I have so many more dream projects coming up this summer and into October and spooky season. So definitely stay tuned for that. I will see you next time. Bye!